We're now to the 39th movement of this form, the right separation kick. This is the first fast movement of this form that we're coming to. There's a few movements here and there throughout this form that are going to be faster than the rest. The rest of it is done at a slow, even pace. This is the first movement that's actually done very quickly. Now we're kicking high with the right foot. Remember, only kick as high as is comfortable for you. You don't have to kick up super high. You can kick as low as you need to for it to be a safe, comfortable movement for you. When you do this kick, you're supposed to put your right hand out and kick up and actually slap your foot with your hand or kick your hand with your foot, depending on how you want to look at it. Now, if you can't reach that high with your kick, that's okay. You can still go through the motion and do your kick as fast as you can comfortably without trying to reach that height. I'm going to begin by showing this movement as if I had started the form facing you. So directly towards you would be south, to my left would be east, to my right would be west. Our last movement, high pat on the horse, left is facing to the east. From our last movement, we're rooted into the right leg, the left foot's barely touching the floor. Left hand is palm up next to the left hip, and your right hand is pressing forward and down, about shoulder height, lined up with your center line. From here, using body motion, you're going to roll the wrist around so that it's palm up. You're going to slide the left hand up. So both hands are palm up. Left wrist is sitting on top of the right wrist. From here, you're going to turn your hands out. So they're going to turn towards you, and you're taking your thumbs and turning them towards you and then down. So the hands are rotating all the way around so that the palms are facing away from you. As you rotate the hands, you're going to turn your body to face northeast. At the same time, you're going to take your foot and turn it out so that it's turned more than northeast. It's going to be turned past that a little bit. You're going to take that toe and push it as far as you can comfortably toward the north and set the foot down on the heel. So from here, right hand turns palm up. Left hand slides up so that the left wrist is on top of the right wrist. Both hands are palm up. You're going to turn the hands so that the palms are facing away. At the same time, turn your body toward the northeast and turn your left foot out, trying to get that toe as far toward north as you can comfortably and setting that foot down on the heel. From here, you're going to shift forward, putting your weight on the left foot. At the same time, you're going to sweep up over the top with both hands and then sink down into a sitting on cross leg stance as your hands drop down. Now I'm going to give you a brief description of the sitting on cross leg stance. If you want details as far as how it's supposed to be done and how you can switch from one side to the other in this stance, there's a video in my playlist for stepping sets and line drills. That's for circling the fist and twist stepping. So that twist step is another name for the sitting on cross leg stance. So if you need more details on the sitting on cross leg stance, go to the playlist for stepping sets and line drills. Look for the video that's for circling the fist and twist stepping and watch that video because I break down how to do this stance and I give you a lot of detail in that video of how to do this. I'm just going to briefly cover it here and if you don't feel like you have enough information on this stance from this video, then I encourage you to go check out that other video for more details on this step. And of course there is a link for that video down in this video's description. For the sitting on cross leg stance, you have one foot, your front foot, in this case it's going to be my left, which you set down on the heel and you turn it out away from your center line. You shift your weight to that foot and the other foot has the heel up. Now you sink straight down from here and what you want to do is tuck your right knee back behind this leg. I'm going to turn slightly so hopefully you have a better view of this. As I sink down, I want my right knee not to come on the big toe side of my leg. I want it to go on the pinky side of my leg. So as it slides down, it tucks through here. Hopefully you can see it with all the black pants and black mat here. Hopefully you can see it coming through here. So it's pushing against my ankle on the pinky side of my left leg. My right foot is up on the ball of the foot with the heel pointing up in the air. And when I sit down, I want to keep my butt off of the heel of my right foot. So from a different view, I'm going to put my left foot down and turn the toe out away from my center line. I'm going to shift my weight to that foot, lift the heel of my right foot, and turn the knee in so that it can tuck against the pinky side of my left leg. And when I sink down, it tucks in there. And I keep space between the heel of my right foot and my butt. And when you're in this stance, you want to be careful that you don't round forward with it. You want to stay straight up and down. When you do that stance, you want to make sure that your feet are close enough 
that your right knee actually presses up against the pinky side of your left leg. And if it's not obvious to you, what I mean by the pinky side is on your foot, you have a big toe on one side, you have a pinky on the other side. So when I say the pinky side, I mean the side of the leg that the pinky is on. So when I go into the sitting on cross leg stance, I wanna make sure that my knee actually presses up against, and there's this pressure from the knee pushing this way and the leg pushing this way that are holding the two together nice and tight. That helps support me in this stance. If my feet are too close together, then I'm not actually gonna be able to tuck that knee in because it's just gonna run into my calf and I can't push it across because my legs are too close. If my feet are too wide, when I sink down, there's not gonna be any contact between my right knee and my left leg. So when I come down here, it's just gonna be all muscle trying to support it instead of having the legs pressing against each other, helping support each other. So this is one movement of the form where you're just gonna have to do it over and over and over and find the spot where when you step, you have the right distance. When you sink down, your legs will be in contact. So a bunch of times when you step, you're gonna realize, oh, I stepped too far. Or you're gonna realize, oh, I didn't step far enough. And you just have to play with it till you find that spot and you can hit it over and over where when you step and sink down, your legs go where they're supposed to. So again, from our last movement, high pat on the horse. We're facing to the east, rooted in the right leg. Right hand turns palm up, left hand slides up, both hands are palm up and the left wrist is sitting on top of the right. I'm gonna to turn toward the northeast and turn my palms away from me. This is where I set my left foot down to get it ready for that sitting on cross leg stance. I'm gonna shift forward, turn my knee in and open my arms up over my head at the same time. From here I sink and the hands drop down and scoop. So it's like I'm scooping something up with both hands. Be careful that you don't lean forward here. Keep your back straight and scoop. From here you want to come up. If you need to, you can adjust this foot a little bit so that it gives you more stability when you kick. If you're comfortable with where it landed, you can just leave it there. From here the hands are going to circle up over the top again and they're going to press down so that my right hand is pointing directly toward the east, my left hand is pointing to the northwest. So it's in between there. As this hand's coming down, I'm going to sweep up with the right leg, raising the knee first, and then kicking out with the top of the foot. So from coming up from the sitting on cross leg stance, the right hand comes over the top, raise the right knee, kick. Let's run through that one more time. Right hand turns palm up, left hand slides up on top, turn toward the northeast as the palms turn away, setting up the left foot for the sitting on cross leg stance. As you shift forward, the arms circle over the top. As you sink down, they drop down into the sitting on cross leg stance. The arms scoop up. From here, you come up, arms coming up in front. They're gonna circle up over the top and down as you do that, you're going to kick with the right leg. Now I'm going to demonstrate as if I'd started the form facing this way. So this is south, directly away from you is east. Our last movement left us facing east with our right hand extended, rooted in the right leg, left foot barely touching the floor. The right hand turns palm up, the left slides up so that the left wrist is on top of the right wrist, both hands palm up. We're going to turn to the northeast turning the left foot out and setting it on the heel, at the same time turning the palms away from us. As we shift forward, the hands circle up, sink down into the sitting on cross leg stance, scoop with the arms, come up, and kick. Again from our last posture, facing east, right hand turns palm up, left hand slides up on top, so the left wrist is on top of the right. Turn to the northeast, turning the left foot out, setting it down on the heel, palms facing away. As you shift forward, the arms circle up over the top. As you sink down, they drop down. From here, you scoop up, come up, and kick. And when you do that kick, it's directly to the east. Now I'm going to demonstrate as if I had started the form facing away from you. So this is south, to my left would be east. From our last movement, we were facing to the east, rooted in the right leg, the left foot was barely touching the floor, right hand was extended in front, left hand was palm up next to the left hip. 
right hand turns palm up. The left hand slides up so that the left wrist is on top of the right. I'm going to turn to face northeast as I turn my hands away from me, or the palms away from me, and I'm going to step to the northeast with my left foot, turning the toe out away from my center line. As I shift forward, my arms open up over the top. As I sink down, I sink into that sitting on cross leg stance and the arms drop down in front and scoop. As I start to come up, they raise up and from our last posture facing to the east, the right hand turns palm up. The left slides up so that the left wrist is on top of the right. I turn to the northeast, turning the palms away from me, turning the left toe away from my center line. As I shift forward, the arms open over the top. They drop down as I sink down. They scoop in front of me. As I come up, the arms start going back up over the top, and I kick. Now I'm going to demonstrate as if I had started the form facing this way. So this would be south, directly towards you would be east. Our last movement of the form, left is facing east, with the right hand extended forward, left hand palm up next to the hip, rooted in the right leg, left leg barely touching the floor. The right hand rolls, so it's palm up. The left slides up on top, so the left wrist is on top of the right. I step to the northeast, turning the palms away, turning the left toe away from my center line. As I shift forward to the left foot, arms circle over the top. I bend the knees and sink as the arms drop down. They scoop in front of me, and as I come up, they circle up over the top and open as I kick. Again, from our last movement, facing to the east, the right hand turns palm up. The left slides up on top, so the left wrist is on top of the right. I turn to the northeast, turning the palms away from me and the left toe away from my center line. As I shift forward, the arms circle up over the top. As I bend my knees and sink, the arms drop down. They scoop in front of me. As I come up, they open up over the top and I kick. Now there are several things that can go kind of weird with that sitting on cross leg stance. So if you are feeling uncomfortable with it or if you don't know how to do it, again, I encourage you to go check out that video in the Stepping Sets and Line Drills playlist. That's for circle the fist and twist step. That'll teach you exactly how to do the twist step if you don't know how already. Other than the twist step, there are some other things to look out for. The first is swinging the leg up straight. So you don't want to come up like this. Just swinging the leg as one unit. You want to come up with the knee and pop out with the toe and then bend the knee again. So from here, it's knee, toe, and then bend the leg again. Another thing to look out for is leaning. So if you find that you're kicking and it's making you do that and lose your balance, you're trying to kick higher than you probably should. You want to be able to keep your structure, stay aligned over that bottom leg, and kick without it throwing your balance off to the back because you're trying to reach up so high with the foot. Remember, when you do that kick, it's okay to come up and kick lower, even lower than that, if that's what you're able to do. The idea with that one is to kind of snap it out and make it quick, but even that can be modified if your legs aren't quite ready for that. If your legs are feeling very tight or they aren't very flexible or maybe you're worried about the joints, being able to withstand a quick snappy motion like that, you can slow it down and come up and do your kick like that if you want to, and that would be totally fine. Ideally, you would want to slowly work on increasing the speed, increasing the height, and that's not really because you need to kick high if you were actually kicking at someone, because kicking someone in the shin or in the knee is going to hurt pretty bad too. So you don't have to kick as high as their head to make it a good effective kick. In fact, most of the time a low kick is going to get in a lot more easily than a high kick will, especially if you aren't really, really good at throwing high kicks. So don't worry about the height, and if you need to slow it down a little bit, that's fine. You can slowly pick up the speed and slowly pick up the height as you train. The reason that we want to go higher and faster with the kick is because it's good training. It helps stretch out the leg when you kick higher, so it helps increase our flexibility, and it helps strengthen the joints and muscles of the legs to increase the speed slowly and gradually. Obviously, if you do it too fast too soon, that can be bad for your muscles and joints. So be gradual, work up to a faster, higher kick, and it's just basically good for training your body and strengthening your body. Now the kicks that we've done so far, like when we raise the hands and set the foot down, or when we do playing the lute and set the foot down, those have been pushing out with the heel. 
and this kick is different. We're not pushing with the heel. So when we do this kick, it's not a heel kick up high. We're pointing the toe and slapping the top of the foot with the hand. So when it comes out, we're hitting the top of the foot with the hand rather than the toe. So when you kick, you want to point the toe out rather than push the heel out. So it's that, not that. That's all that there is to the 39th move of this form. In our next video, we're going to be learning the same kick with the left leg, so you have a chance to stretch out and strengthen that leg as well. As always, I hope you found this video very helpful. Thank you for watching.